This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here's what you need to know today. Armenian police have found additional weapons in nearly two dozen raids at homes of members in the offices of a fringe anti-government group that may be connected to an armed assault on a police station over the weekend that left two attackers with serious injuries. Law enforcement officers have confiscated an unnamed number of weapons, ammunition, planners, schemes, and drug-like substances from the National Democratic Alliance, Armenia's investigative authorities said in a statement today. On Sunday, two men were injured and a third detained after they attempted to break into a police precinct building in the suburbs of Yerevan. Two of the men were taken to the hospital with serious, though non-life-threatening, shrapnel wounds after they attempted to detonate a grenade. The third man, who was not injured, was detained after a two-hour standoff with law enforcement at the police headquarters of Yerevan's Nornork district. The men appear to be supporters of the National Democratic Alliance, though the group has denied any direct connection to the attack. The attack is reminiscent of another armed assault on a Yerevan police station in 2016 carried out by a second fringe anti-government group that the National Democratic Alliance has close ties to. In that incident, armed men from the Daredevils of Sassoon group stormed a police station in the city's Arabuni district. Three police officers were killed in the ensuing standoff. This week's police raids on the National Democratic Alliance come amid what appears to be a growing crackdown on dissent after Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan said last week he is ready to hand over four abandoned villages in Armenia's northeastern Tavush region to Azerbaijan. Over the weekend, police briefly detained dozens of members of Combat Brotherhood on charges of illegal weapons possession after the paramilitary group announced plans to hold a training session near those four villages. Days earlier, two popular podcast hosts were arrested on charges of hooliganism after airing an expletive-laced livestream about the possible handover of the four villages. As of today, Vazgen Sakatelyan and Narek Samsonyan remain in detention. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for Russian President Vladimir Putin has called on Armenia to show political will to continue developing relations as ties between the two countries continue to fray. We hope the political will to continue developing our relations will prevail in Yerevan and we will successfully pass this difficult period, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov told Russia's Argumenti i Fakti newspaper in a lengthy interview posted today. Continuing, Peskov slammed deepening involvement by the European Union and United States in the South Caucasus, saying, We are convinced that the involvement of powers from outside the region should be strongly restricted because they are not capable of bringing stability and prosperity there. Armenia and the other countries of the former Soviet Union continue to be our main foreign policy priority, Peskov added. Relations between Armenia and Russia have worsened dramatically in recent months, with anger and frustration mounting in Yerevan over what is seen as Moscow's unwillingness or inability to come to the country's defense in line with its treaty obligations. Earlier this month, a spokesperson for Russia's foreign ministry warned Armenia's accelerating tilt to the west risks causing irreparable damage to the country's relations with Moscow. In other diplomatic news, Pashinyan has said he expects Turkey to refrain from taking any steps to further inflame regional tensions and called on the country to implement a previously reached agreement to partially reopen the long-closed border. Turkey should have a balanced position on the various developments in the region. Armenia expects that Turkey's rhetoric will not be aimed at increasing regional tensions but will contribute to promoting dialogue and cooperation in the region, Pashinyan told Greece's Katha Marini newspaper in an exclusive interview yesterday. Referring to a preliminary agreement reached between Yerevan and Ankara two years ago to partially reopen in their long shuttered border, the Prime Minister said, We really believe that the implementation of this agreement will have a positive impact on regional dynamics. Despite that, as of now, the border remains closed, as it has been for more than three decades when Turkey began an economic blockade on Armenia that remains in place to this day. And finally, the civil net number of the day is 16,608. That's the total number of Indian citizens who migrated to Armenia last year, according to figures made public yesterday by the country's interior ministry. That makes Indians one of Armenia's biggest ethnic minority groups. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.